you know, I was recording this or something before, and I learned that I was not showing the screen. <laughs> I could have uploaded it, but whatever. Let's go to Luke chapter 6, verse 35. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful, and to the evil. Something came to my mind when I said that. So what does this mean here? But love ye your enemies. Love your enemies. Let me say this first. I don't see myself better than anyone else. I am just a guy who wants to go to heaven. And on my way to heaven, I am trying to bring other people with me. And I pray that you all advance higher than I. That's it. Back in the past, I was more of an introvert. And if you know anything about introverts, they don't really mess with anyone. They want to mind their own business. They want to do their own thing. So that is the way that I was. And I am coming out of that, of being an introvert. There is something else I wanted to say. Mm can't really think of it right now my lord whatever let me go down this other route right quick before I get to my main point when I was more deep as an introvert I really at one time would have about one friend. That's it. Now, there were other people that I would speak to, but I would only have one friend. Some people may say that they have 20 friends, 50 friends, so many friends. <laughs> Listen, you don't have 20 friends. You don't have 50 friends. Some people don't know the definition of what a friend is. Many of the people that you call friends is not really a friend and you are going to find this out and some people may have found this out. Just because you have some things in common with people, just because you may be able to laugh and joke with some people, doesn't mean that they are a friend. Something is going to happen or something has happened to prove to you that they are not a friend. Currently, I don't have any friends. And don't feel sorry for me or anything like that. It is not that I don't want a friend. It is not that I don't speak with other people because I do. And I am not saying that the people that I speak to are bad. I am not saying that. But what I am saying, trying to be friends with them, it is not going to work. For instance, Let's say that you are building, building a puzzle. Can you put a circular shape in a square peg? 
Can you fit a circular shape in a square peg? Of course not. That is what you are doing when you are trying to make friends. You don't make friends. If a connection is there, then you move forward. But you don't try to force something that is not there. This goes with friends, people you want to date or marry. When you have to force something there, my Lord, you are going to have many, many problems. You don't force anything. If the connection is there, move ahead. If it's not there, keep it there. Well, Kevin, I have been alone and I see people around having friends and boyfriends and girlfriends and I want one too. Hey, do as you please. When you get hurt, remember what Kev, Uncle Kev, told you. Okay. Let's go to Luke chapter 6, 35. Verse 35, to the left is the King James Version, to the right is the Expanded Bible. Let's do it. Don't force anything that is not there, man. <laughs> you are going to make many, many mistakes forcing stuff that should not happen, <laughs> but because you are feeling some type of way lonely or whatever else quit that man quit that but love ye your enemies and do good and land hoping for nothing again and your reward shall be great and ye shall be the children of the highest for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil so what is that saying there my Lord, love your enemies as if, as if they are a friend. I am not saying that you have to give them the key to your apartment or home. I am not saying that you can bring them around your wife or husband. I am not saying that you have to give them cookies every time you see them. I am not saying that. What I am saying, treat your enemy well. If they need clothes, give them clothes. If they need food, give them food. If they need water, give them water. But I am against people asking for money and buying cigarettes and beer and stuff like I dislike that with a passion. I don't like that. Don't ask me for money that you buy drugs with it. Don't make me a partaker of your drug abuse or your alcohol abuse. I dislike that. And do good. What does do good mean? It is right there in the green. Do good. Some people believe to do good, all they have to do is work their job, take care of their family. They may believe that they can have sex before marriage and get drunk and get high and curse a bit and do all of these bad things. But if they are not really hurting people, they believe they are good. No, you are not good because you are disobeying God. What good is, is following the rules and regulations of the Bible. That is what good is. So you are not good unless you are good pertaining to what the Bible is saying. And that is repenting of your sins and following the rules and regulations of the Bible. And land, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great. Let me say this. I am in a ministry where 
I give people free Bibles, sometimes free shoes, sometimes free clothes, but mainly free Bibles and I mail out documents about God to them. And maybe one or two people, I may have really, let me say this, this one person, I told this person, look, the money is not going to me. The money is going to people. I am not going to buy an airplane or a jet or anything like that. I am placing this money toward the people. And this person said, okay, and I am willing to help you. And I thank God this person helped me as long as they had. And we had a disagreement about something other than about the ministry. Other than the ministry. And this person said this phrase, after all I have done for you. Did I not say where the money is going? You are not doing this for me. Otherwise, I would have put the money or bought some Jordan shoes or something. <laughs> I don't like Jordans. I would have bought some things for myself if it was for me. So you are not giving me the money per se, but the money is going toward the people. So how can you say, after all I have done for you. I was shocked that this person actually said this to me. Are you serious? After all you have done for me? When you do things for people, you are doing it, doing it unto God. So you are not for that situation there when you was giving me money for the ministry it was not for me otherwise I would have placed it in my pocket uh, let me continue when you do things for people no matter if it is small no matter if it is large, when you do things for people, God cares about it all. God cares about the large sins and the tiny sins. God cares about the tiny acts of kindness as well as the large. If you were to give a homeless person or someone one slice of bread don't you know that God is going to notice that and you are going to reap a reward from that not only on earth but in heaven as well when you do things unto people you are doing it unto God let me say this too I believe I have told you all that this world is only a test. Think about it. God knows the beginning from the end. God knows the future now. As time is now, God knows what is going to happen, right? So if God has all of this knowledge for what reason would he allow Satan in the Garden of Eden if he knew that Satan was going to deceive Eve why would God allow Satan on this earth 
if he knew that things would be the way that it is now? What reason is there? If it is not to be tested, for us to be tested, for what other reason would he allow Satan near humans? If the reason is to not to be tested, why would he place a forbidden tree in the Garden of Eden if God did not want to test Adam and Eve? What other reason can you tell me why God would do something like that if the reason is not to test them? Think about that. Have you thought about that? As things are now, isn't God powerful enough to lock up all demons and Satan in the lake of fire now? So why does he have them roaming around the earth now? If the reason is not to test us, have you thought about that? So if he is allowing Satan and demons and all this bad stuff here to happen on earth, what is that telling you? This life is a test. On one side, if you choose to disobey God's rules, you are going to be cursed. On the other side, if you choose to obey God's rules, you are going to be blessed. Curse, blessed. Cursed, blessed. What is that telling you? Test. Test. Knowing that this life is a test, the choice is simple. Why not obey God, knowing that you are being tested? Many of us don't really have many of the good things that we wanted in life. Some of us want like a new home, a certain amount of cars, like brand new cars, clothes, so on and so on and so on. Okay. And we may not get exactly what we want on this earth. Okay. The way that earth functions is not how heaven functions. The way you obtain things on earth is not the same way that you obtain things in heaven. If you want to obtain things in heaven, usually what a person has to do is work hard. Perhaps go to college, so on and so on and so on. It is not that way in heaven. The way that you obtain things in heaven is the way that you live on this earth. What you do on this earth determines what you get in heaven. What do you mean, Kevin? Okay. What you do for Jesus Christ on this earth, okay, determines what you get in heaven. Listen to me now. What you do on this earth for Jesus Christ determines what you get in heaven. Since this is a test, we will get our main rewards in heaven. Since this life is a test, and if you obey God, following his rules and regulations, you are going to reap your main reward in heaven. I don't know if you understand this. There is an incredible large incentive to serve God. Some people believe that if they go to heaven, that they have to pray all day, all night, every day. 
that it is going to be boring, you are only going to wear white, and you are going to be sitting around not really doing anything. Er we are speaking about a God that made Earth. If you find Earth enjoyable, how much more <laughs> will heaven be? A place with no bad things. A place with, from what I understand, no danger. So if you enjoy Earth, Imagine how much the more you are going to enjoy heaven. You are going to do more than playing on your harp and praying. You are going to do much more than that. Look at how many things that you can do on earth. Would it make sense for God to limit heaven to doing praying and playing on your heart. That makes no sense. So obviously what you have been told about heaven is incorrect. We are in a test. Can't you see that? Why place demons and Satan on this earth with humans if it is not a test? Do you believe that Satan chose to come to earth? Hey, I am going to force my way onto earth. No, he was allowed. My Lord, what reason is there for Satan to be on this earth? If not to test us. We are in a test. Since you can't get the things you want on this earth, why not work for Jesus Christ now and earn great rewards in heaven? That's why I was pulling more and more people to help me pass out Bibles to people, help me do things for the poor and other people because what you are doing is not in vain. You are bringing more people to Christ. You are going to be rewarded for you. You are going to be rewarded for it. I want to do more with serving and helping people. That's why I try to pull people to it. But they, some of them, not all, have this earthly mindset. Well, Kevin just want my money. Look at me. I don't have a gold chain. Well, I am, look at the way I dress. I don't wear suits. I don't have like a BMW or a nice car or a really nice car. I am not wearing gold rings on all of my fingers. I don't have gold on my teeth. As people say, uh, gold grill. <laughs> Your life on earth determines what you get in heaven. What you do on this earth for God determines what you get in heaven. Now knowing this, go wild with helping people. You don't have to give me a thing. Go out there, start your own ministry up and pass out Bibles. Go out there, pass out tracks. Print on pieces of paper, come to Jesus and pass them out to people. That counts 
and you are going to be rewarded for that. Remember, God cares about the tiny things as much as the large. Some people complain about being poor on this earth. There was this one woman that I used to talk to and she was saying that she is very poor and all this stuff here. Okay, what are you doing for God? If you are going to be poor on this earth, why would you want to be poor? Why not do more things for God and gain more rewards in heaven? Don't you know that we are not going to get the same things in heaven? Let's say you sin your whole life. You just sinning, 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 sinning. You are doing all the wrong things and a second before you die, you repent of your sins. Let's say that another person does right by God for 20 years and have done many things for God. Let's say you both, you all die at the same time. Don't you know that person that lived for God for 20 years is going to be rewarded more than you? Why? Because he has done, he or she have done much more than you. Everything you do for God is not in vain. What you do for God is not in vain. <clears throat> There is an incredible, large incentive to serve God. Some people may say, well, I don't serve God to be rewarded for him. I just serve God to just serve God. Let me tell you what, once you get to heaven, tell God to give me all of your rewards. Since you are just serving God, to just serve God or because you love God. I serve God because of everything, because I love him, I want the rewards, I want everything he is willing to give me. I want everything. If he is willing to give it, why not? <laughs> I serve God for all the reasons. I pray that makes sense. So since you are saying that you are serving God because you love God, not because of the rewards, okay, tell God to give them to me. Give your rewards to me <laughs> because I will take them. I will find something to do with them. Or how can I say that? I can use them. Okay, my Lord, let's continue. And ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. We have to do things for people whether they appreciate it or not. Their appreciation should not even matter. Whether they thank you for what you do for them doesn't matter. Well, Kevin, you know, I am tired of doing things for people and they don't appreciate me. I just want to stop it. Grow up. Mature more in God. You have to get in a habit of doing what is right, even when all the odds are against you. Myself, it was difficult for me to do things for my enemies, but the more I did it, the easier it became. So I don't think twice to do things for my enemies. Let's say I have this enemy. Now, at first, it may feel awkward and weird and whatever else. 
But after doing something for that enemy so many times, it is like second nature. Now, when I make a new enemy, you know, that same awkward, weird feeling may come across. Hey, I don't care about that feeling. Let me do it anyway. Let me do right by that person and give to that person whether they deserve it or not. It doesn't matter. We are going to be judged based upon what we have done on earth. When God is judging you, he is not going to judge you based upon another person's life. When he judges me, I am not going to be judged based upon, based upon what my father did to me or what my father said to me. I am going to be judged upon my works, my life. The rules and regulations I either obeyed or disobeyed. An individual affair. So you can't say, well, God, I did not serve you because my mother and father treated me so wrongly and they raised me wrong. So what other choice did I have? <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> you are going to hell. No matter how many people I speak to, whether they are black, white, brown, what other, whatever other color. We all go through similar things. I am telling you, man. It is very shocking. Demons play similar tricks on us all. No matter who you are, no matter what country you are from, whether you are from the far east, the far west, north or south, Satan plays the same tricks on us all, pretty much. We all go through pain, but we can't allow that to shape the way that we are. We have to forgive and move on. You may not forget, but you need to move on. And if you choose not to move on and keep that within your heart, that bitterness, that anger, all that mess there, I'm telling you, it is going to corrupt you. It is going to influence your actions and your thoughts. It is going to pull you down and make you remain in sin. I'm telling you. I am telling you. It is time to move on. What makes your pain greater than anyone else? You don't know what other people have gone through. I have heard some really bad stories about people, what they went through. Chances are you may not have gone through what other people have gone through, but some of them forgave. But you are thinking about yourself, about your feelings, about your pain, and how people hurt you. It is time to grow up. That kitty stuff is not going to work for you. You need to mature. I pray that this makes sense. Kevin, you are just mean and heartless. I hate you. Look. Would you rather, whether, or rather, have me lie to you and comfort you and say, oh, everything is going to be okay. You are going to heaven with all that hate in your heart. Do you want me to say that to you? And then when you die, you go straight to hell? Or would you want me to confront you and tell you to change? 
Yes, it may sting a bit, but if you follow suit, it is going to save your soul. How do you want me to approach you? With lies or the straight truth? We don't know when we are going to die, so I treat many things as urgent. Listen, what if a person stayed in hell for one hour and he gets out of hell and God tells that person, hey, the only way that I am going to let you out of hell is if you tell these five people and persuade them to get out of hell. Okay, now God lets that person out of hell. How do you think that person is going to approach you? Hey, you need to change your ways now, change now. He is going to talk to you in a very aggressive way urgent way that person may be crying shouting like what are you doing change now he is going to do something to show you that it is not a game God allowed me I believe God allows me to see certain things and those certain evil things that I see, demons are not playing around. There are some people who like demons, that like to summon demons, that think demons are their pal, their friend. There is no good in a demon. There is no good quality in a demon. So how can they be friendly? It's all deception. If there is no good in me, if something seems good or right, it is deception. Because if there is no good in me, how can I be good? So that tells you, after a while being around that demon, it will have to show its true nature because there is no good in it. So the, so the deception can only last for a certain time period. Because the more time a demon stays around you, it will have to show you its true colors. So the deception can only last for a while. And many of you all that play around with demons already know this, but still choose to follow the same route knowing that that demon is really against you. Repent of your sins. Change now. Well, I am afraid that if I change, those demons are going to attack me and they told me that they are going to kill me and stuff like that. Listen, when you come to God, God is going to protect you. You have to have faith in God. Demons can say whatever they want to you, but they don't have more power than God. If they did, why aren't all Christians dead? So that shows you that demons don't have more power than God. So come to God. Even if you have been in witchcraft or summoning demons for many years, even if you have been threatened by demons saying that they are going to curse you and kill you and kill off your mom and dad and stuff like that, look, come to God and ask God to protect you. That is what you need to do. If I was not protected by God, <laughs> oh my Lord, don't you know, 
I could have died many times in my life, countless times. To be quite honest, I should have died back when I was like 12. I was so close from being hit by a car. And it is a miracle. And I have no idea how that car did not hit me. It makes no sense other than some angels or God or whatever made that car and I have no idea how it can swerve when it is so close to you without touching you. My body froze up, I could not move. And my life flashed before my eyes in seconds, like from the beginning toward the end. Crazy. Like all the breath in me just came out. I could not move. And I knew that I was dead. That I was dead then. But somehow that car swerved at the last second. And I could tell you more and more and more and more, but you get the point. So let me stop here. God bless you.